Proportional, integral, derivative, PID for short. If you're into control systems, maybe you do that at work. Um, it's a very familiar term and no confusion there at all. The rest of us, who knows what that means. But it's a feature in the user interface of the CR6 community firmware. And today we're going to have a look at it and talk about how it works. This is another in the series of uh, demonstrations I'm doing for, to give you a tour of what the CF 6.1 community firmware user interface is and how it looks and how it's navigated. From here on the main screen, today we're going into calibrate menu again. Last time I was here I showed you how to calibrate E-steps. Pit tuning is truly simple. All you're going to do is do that first is tell it what temperature you would like to control stably at what printing pr temperature for instance you wish to work so let's say I'm doing PLA all the time no 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 Steve let's see which one you're tapping there you go 200 is what I like to print PLA at I want my temperature control on the nozzle to be stable at 200 I can operate with or without the fan during the PID cycling. Um, most of the time I'm operating with the fan on. It's only off during the initial layers or so. So I like to have it on when I'm going. This is a Marlin feature. If you um, looked up M303, I believe it is, in the Marlin M uh, G codes, you'll see all the parameters that can be passed. Uh, one of them is uh, the C parameter says, how many cycles would you like me to do? And in the commentary on the code, I've determined that it says 5 or 7 is better than 3 so I like to use 5 it's still reasonably quick and it's that much more accurate again and you press PID tuning you hear the fan because I just told it to turn on the fan you can watch the temperature at the bottom it does not show you the target of 200 curiosity why Marlin was programmed that way but tis how it is so you're looking down here at the nozzle temperature and the actual temperature shows you what the heater is doing right now and you'll be able to watch that cycle above and below the 200 target as it overshoots the target and then lets go and waits for it to cool off below target and then heats up and it'll cycle that five times in my case and then it'll declare that the values have been um, recorded into EEPROM and that's the new numbers it's using instead of the ones that were baked into the firmware when it was last compiled. And I'll just speed this up towards the end. And that's it. It's no harder than that. You've done your PID tuning on the nozzle. So when you do run PID on the nozzle I recommend you leave the silicon sock installed on the heater block because if you leave that open to the air it changes the thermodynamics quite considerably and there have been reports of folks who can't get their their nozzle up to the temperature that it should be capable of and it's simply because the stock is off and the cooling fans that are running are blowing on the on the block enough to take the heat away <laughs> before it can get up there and the, the um, printer will time out as, as heating failed do run the, the part cooling fan with your nozzle PID because that fan also, although it's not supposed to blow on the nozzle, it's actually supposed to blow below it. Let's face it, there'll be some turbulence, there's going to be some air blowing across the heater block, just as there is air leaking downward from the fan that is cooling the heater block itself. It's blowing downward on the heater block. So there are fans at work taking away the heat from your system. And the PID does notice, and it will change the parameters, and it may cause um, heating to fail when you come to print if you haven't uh, selected fans on. So, hope that was short enough for those of you who like to buzz through the videos. Uh, I'm sure you found what you're looking for for the guys who enjoy the soundtrack and the final uh, sign-off. Uh, here it comes. Bye-bye.